Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Suman Chen. I'm a principal at BellArc. Uh, welcome to our webinar today um, on a Bell Managed Data Analytics. Uh, a synopsis of what we're going over today uh, initially, uh, just show you what the architecture looks like in a very uh, high level uh, uh, couple of uh, charts. And the reports that we'll be going over today are the, <coughs> the uh, Bell Managed Systems, which uh, really uh, very much um, uh, reflects uh, the standard Bell Managed reports, the web-based reports. However, it's got some uh, additional features that we'll uh, demonstrate to you quickly. Again, this is more of a high-level um, overview, but uh, please feel free to ask any questions uh, as they come up uh, to you. Then the standard software uh, purchase versus installed reports, these are on a uh, per-install kind of license model. Um, a very interesting one, of course, is the software that's installed but actually hasn't been used for a period of time, and uh, we'll show you how that's done. Um, there's also a software maintenance report that uh, helps you um, schedule uh, maintenance or uh, alerts you to when maintenance is uh, coming up for renewal. Um, and then uh, one particular example, obviously the SQL Server and uh, Oracle um, uh, products are licensed on uh, different license metrics, uh, core-based or uh, server cal-based. So there are separate reports for those, um, and we will uh, show you the details uh, on both of those products. So this is the um, schematic of how the uh, data analytics module works for a single user. So uh, this basically is a uh, model where, uh, here we go, where you have a uh, single um, uh, desktop or workstation, if you will, that grabs, uh, that has the uh, data analytics software installed on this particular um, workstation. It grabs a feed from uh, the Bell Managed Database. That's a, a SQL, uh, SQL Server or Oracle database. Um, it grabs uh, information from Excel that uh, the purchase records that are, are in an Excel format. And uh, it can um, also has the ability to grab information uh, that you might put in there that might customize that. So you may have other uh, kinds of HR and uh, other types of information, uh, maintenance records, for example, in there. Um, so that's, uh, that's all possible in the data analytics, a single user module. Um, there is a server module which um, uh, comes with a, uh, starts with a five name user minimum um, that gives you either web or the uh, client data analytics, client access to the reports. And again, works the same way, except it's uh, via the, um, a, a Windows server install of the data analytics server version. Again, the Bell Manage uh, <coughs> Uh, access is the Bell Managed Database. That information is uh, brought into the server. Uh, the purchase records uh, currently in Excel and other um, uh, data that you might be interested in. So this is the uh, standard interface. This is the client interface. However, the web-based interface is, uh, works quite similarly. And um, uh, as you'll see, a lot of these reports uh, up at the top, these tabs, are reports uh, that those of you who are familiar with Bell Manage uh, will recognize. Uh, this is a uh, summary report, basically, with um, uh, computer names and, and uh, who the last user uh, logged in, uh, a bit about the CPU and, and all that uh, normal kinds of Bell Manage information. Um, but uh, we'll use this to uh, show you some uh, features that um, are, are might be quite interesting. So uh, when you start uh, filtering or selecting uh, options, um, ClickView is, is more of a, let me back up a little bit, ClickView is a real business intelligence kind of package where you can do a lot of what-if analyses um, that, that are ad hoc. It it's doesn't necessarily need to be built in in advance. So for example, what if we um, uh, wanted to uh, do something across different types of information? Uh, so for example, we have um, uh, what if we wanted to look at users who had AutoCAD but had smaller monitors, and, and those are ones that we might want to plan to upgrade. So uh, one of the things that we would do is let's go to the All Software Versions report that you're all familiar with. And down here, you'll see this is a uh, filtering box here. And under Company, we'll take a quick look here, and we'll select uh, Autodesk. Let me do a quick search here for Autodesk. And here it's third one in. So automatically, the table that we're seeing here is just Autodesk uh, software. 
And uh, for product, we'll look at AutoCAD. And it's, I see it right here. Actually, there's three of four of them. So we'll, we'll just grab all those. And uh, now we've uh, selected for AutoCAD. And now at the same time, we wanted to look at uh, those users now. We have the machines that are running AutoCAD, uh, different versions. Uh, we have about 225, exactly. And now we want to look at those users who have small monitors. So we'll click on the Monitors tab. And we have a Size tab here. And we'll just pick all the ones that are, um, say, less than, um, less than 20 uh, inches diagonal. Click. That's it. Automatically, we've got uh, the list of computers that um, have small monitors, at least uh, less than 20 inches diagonal. And you can see here what we've actually selected on. So you can see here at the bottom, we've selected AutoCAD, um, different auto, all, sorry, we've selected company Autodesk, different AutoCAD products, and then diagonal from 7 to 22, uh, 7 out of 22. So we've selected uh, the smaller diagonal size. So that gives you a little bit of a feel for um, how uh, uh, the analytics module works. And uh, now we'll go into some specialized uh, or um, optimization types of reports. So the, uh, the first one that we'll take a look at is um, software, uh, basically on a per uh, install basis, software purchase versus installed. So here um, we're basically seeing um, in, in our demo. Um, this is the uh, listed by company, by product. Um, we can also see here by uh, rights. So L is for, uh, here I can keep the mouse over, L is for license, uh, M is maintenance, SA is software assurance, of course, um, and, and then Cal. So you can see by rights, this is, okay, so now we have purchase data. So what it's done is it's actually automatically grabbed the purchased and unit cost um, information um, and license type from uh, the Excel uh, uh, spreadsheet, which has, uh, which has the purchase records. And it's merged that with the Bell Managed data that you see here. OK, so the, the installed information all comes from Bell Managed. The purchase comes from the Excel spreadsheet, which is the purchase records. And we'll show that to you in a, in a second. And then, of course, the unit cost, total cost, and savings. This is just a demo, so obviously we've, we've we purchased an awful lot more than we have installed here, so this is this is just a demo. But we can actually show you um, how quickly this uh, selection um, information works too. So if we pick, uh, say, company, we want to select um, Microsoft. Oh, one thing you might uh, find interesting here: um, you'll see um, there's a number of fields, companies that are in uh, white backgrounds. Those are the ones that uh, uh, are. Uh, currently um, uh, selectable or currently visible in our spreadsheet. You can also see everything, though, the, the entire list. And that th those are the ones in gray. And uh, the re there, there is a particular reason why, why not everything is selected, because of we, we did a selection. These are both products that are purchased and installed, as you see there. So we pick Microsoft. And you can see that very quickly. And say we wanted to pick a particular product on Microsoft. And I guess we're going to pick. Uh, Visio. So we've got three Visio products here. Click, and that's it. So we can very quickly see that of the three products, uh, the rights associated with those, how much we've purchased, what's installed, and the uh, the, the differences. Uh, let me show you the spreadsheet very quickly. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. I did not start up my Excel. So this shows you basically the way this is laid out is uh, by SKU, uh, the name of the product, uh, a description that you might add, um, the rights associated with that particular product. If it's uh, got uh, maintenance or SA involved, it is obviously a start and an end date. Uh, the uh, the software publisher um, and uh, additional information that you might want um, there's uh, the, the uh, number of installs that uh, uh, rights that you've purchased, uh, the total cost, obviously unit cost, uh, purchase date, uh, purchase order number, things like that that you might want to add to it. So um, it basically takes uh, the analytics module takes 
this uh, information from the purchase records, marries it with the Bell Managed data in your database, and creates the report that we just saw. So very interesting. Uh, another interesting report is uh, the uh, software not used. So let me just click on the right one, installed and not used. So again, basically, it's uh, by default, it's listed by, uh, obviously, by company, by product, and it's got the purchase information, again, from the Excel spreadsheet, your purchase records. But uh, what if we actually wanted to say, what about um, uh, I'm just interested in software that hasn't been used in, say, six months. So we'll just say pick 180 days. And automatically, that will just show us all the software that has not been used for 180 days. Now, if you remember, um, uh, uh, the guys, Gary and the guys, actually got a patent um, last year. We got a US uh, patent last year on the method that uh, Bellarc uses to automatically discover uh, when software was last used. So there's no re need to, to run this for six months. I mean, immediately, the moment the client does the discovery on the host, it knows when all of the software um, on that box was last used, pretty much. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's, uh, it's, it's very good. And the nice thing about it is uh, you don't need to run it for that period of time. You don't need heavy monitoring of those uh, machines um, over that period of time. You don't need to write special scripts. So this will do it for all of the installed software on that host. And uh, say we want to, again, pick uh, our um, Microsoft example. And if we want to pick, again, uh, I guess, uh, uh, our Visio example, we can very quickly see that um, these particular, uh, this much product, installed product, has not been used for that period of time. Now, there is also um, a uh, report that will show you which particular machines that applies to. Uh, that's a detailed report, but this is the overall report. OK. Uh, the next one. Yeah, Ken? I would just point out the not used column has the actual count of not used, which is yep. a portion of the installed total. Yep. So, so here we can, we, can, we, can, we can actually see, yeah, right. So this is the total installed. As Ken's pointed out, this is, this is the not used portion. So this demo has, uh, has quite a bit of not used, certainly in the, in the, pro, in the pro section. Thanks. All right. Now let's do our software maintenance report. And uh, here, um, it again comes with different rights. So we will pick, um, as you see here, here's, here's all the software. Here's different kinds of rights. Some of these are licenses. Some are just uh, maintenance. So why don't we just select on, on maintenance. So we'll just select on M. So immediately we will see M. And let's say um, expired. So we want to see what's coming up for expiration. So we look at, looks like there's some software that's expiring in the next 20-odd uh, days or so. And uh, lo and behold, there it is, Google Earth Pro. Right, expires January, uh, January 1st. Oops, sorry, December 31st. Um, so very, very quickly, you can, you, can, you, can, you can determine this in these maintenance reports. OK. And again, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to um, text those in, and uh, we'll take your um, uh, voice questions at the end of the uh, conference. So now uh, we'll move on to SQL Server and Oracle reports. Now again, um, these are products that are not licensed on a, um, on a per install basis. Um, they're uh, different licensing models based on the uh, product types uh, and additions, additions and versions. Uh, so let me pull up the SQL Server detailed report. OK. So this looks a little bit complex. Um, but what it is, is this is the um, details behind the uh, licensing metrics for SQL Server. So these are actually reports that um, you might, you might occasionally need to fill in these uh, worksheets for Microsoft uh, when you do your true-ups. And uh, this is the kind of information that you'll, uh, you'll be uh, including in that. So this is done on a, on a per-server basis. Um, you'll see the way it's actually organized in this sheet, um, it's a little bit difficult. But you'll see here is a um, 
physical, let me just mark these. This is a physical machine with these virtual instances right here. And uh, let me just back out of that. So there's a number of physical hosts here with virtual instances on them. And then um, the SQL Server version, uh, the addition, um, and then you will see as we go along uh, the types. These are all um, uh, virtual instances on physical machines. This is a physical machine license required. Depends on the uh, product, obviously. Um, and this is a uh, core license. These are server cloud-based licenses. Um, you'll see here the processors uh, uh, involved. And obviously, a lot of this is depending on the uh, CPUs and cores um, used. And there is additional information here, of course, that uh, that you can you can you can you can use based on clock speed and things like that. Okay, so basically, this is the um, the detailed spreadsheet. Um, and uh, let me then the license metrics then are also included in the summary sheet. So let me show you that. So this is actually the summary of what we what we just saw. And you'll see here it's organized based on uh, by addition and product. So the, this is an enterprise server-based license. This is an enterprise core-based license. This is standard server. This is a B sorry uh, business intelligence server Cal-based license. These are standard uh, processor-based licenses. Okay. So this actually the back. Uh, behind this particular report is, are all the license metrics for uh, SQL Server and based on uh, additions and versions and products. Okay, and let me do the same for Oracle. Um, this again is um, Oracle similar but not, not quite the same of course. Um, it's got the uh, uh, name user license and also processor uh, based licenses uh, based on core factors. Uh, so this is the detailed uh, report for Oracle instances, as we call it. And of course, it's got the version, um, the addition. We just have enterprise in this particular um, example, um, the products. And so this would be the database plus the options involved. Um, and then, of course, the, the type, whether it's a virtual on physical or physical on physical uh, instance, and then the processor information. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the Oracle summary report, which summarizes, aggregates all that information uh, based on, uh, you, uh, obviously, the product edition, uh, the license type, the, the rights involved, and uh, the actual licenses purchased comes from the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet again. Well, feel free to obviously contact us at any time, and we very, very much uh, appreciate people attending and uh, would welcome your uh, thoughts and suggestions, too. So thank you all very much, and uh, we will uh, end the presentation.